So what we're doing today is we're going to be comparing Zubuntu to Linux Mint XFCE. I personally use GNOME, so neither of these are something that really appealed to me, but for using with older hardware, XFCE is probably the best user interface that you can use for how lightweight it is, that you can get away with a lot more performance without spending tons of money on a newer computer. So for next weekend's project, I need to find out which one is going to be the best. I picked up two brand new Samsung 851 series uh, 256 gigabyte solid state drives, as well as four modules of two gigabyte RAM each, DDR3, uh, PC3, 10600. The two laptops that I'm gonna be using are Lenovo E440s. I've taken apart the laptops, I've taken the heat sink off, cleaned all the dust out of the fans, off the heat sink, make sure it flows really well, and then changed the thermal compound with Arctic Silver 5, just to make sure that they both have the best performance that they can out of it, as well as matching RAM, matching processor, matching laptops identically. I'm even going to be using the same USB stick to install them. So this is a very apples to apples comparison of Zubuntu versus Linux Mint XFCE. These are the Samsung 256GB solid state drives and the 2GB RAM modules to give us 4GB for each laptop. Let's just pop one of these SSDs in. And now 2 gigabytes of RAM and 4 gigabytes. I'll leave the bottom cover off just because we're going to be swapping out that SSD later. Now we can put the Ubuntu USB stick in, previously repaired, off of the 64-bit ISO. We can boot into the BIOS using F1. And here we'll be able to see the 4 gigabytes of RAM showing up, as well as the Intel Core i3 4000M pushing F12 to bring up that boot menu. There we go, so now we can just boot from the USB stick. We're gonna select install because we wanna have this installed natively on the SSD. So you select a language, keyboard layout, and we're gonna unselect the updates in third party just for a faster install because it won't be necessary for OS testing. Then we're gonna erase everything. Yeah, we're not gonna worry about selecting a region. Uh, Username uh, Ubuntu test. Let's make the password spacebar just to make it simple. Then log in automatically just to keep this as fast as possible. Okay, now we can finish up the other laptop while this is installing. I took the heatsink off that second laptop. You can see that it's just caked with old, crusty thermal compounds. So we're going to clean it off with 99% alcohol. All clean, ready for thermal paste, using Arctic Silver 5, just like we did with the first one. Cleaned off the heatsink. Make sure those get in there first. Then we can push the fan down. The onboard GPU for this one, you can see that it actually uses a silicone heat. So we didn't have to apply thermal compound there. Now we can tighten the screws in the numbered order, not forgetting to plug the fan back in as well as making sure those fan screws are also tightened down. Now, just like the first one, this one's also getting the other two 2 gigabyte RAM modules. And you can see here, just a little bit closer, that they are 2 gigabyte of DDR3 PC3 10600. And then the Samsung 851 series 256 gigabyte solid state, identical to the last one. We are back at the Zubuntu install. It's finished and ready to be rebooted into the newly installed OS. Now you can just take that USB stick out and just restart. Now while we leave it to do its first boot, we'll take the identical USB stick just to rule out any kind of corrupt USB and we'll make the USB installer for Linux Mint XFCE. So let's pop this into the mammoth. Okay, we can mount the XFCE 64-bit ISO for Linux Mint. Make sure it's in UEFI with a GPT selected for guided partition table. And then we'll just hit start, make sure it's in the DD image mode because this is a Linux ISO. Now we just wait for this to be done. I'm showing the 4 gigabytes of RAM and i3 4000M. Exact same processor, same memory. I'll push F12 to get back to that boot options menu. Uh, we'll just push any key here just to get rid of that. We'll it'll start Linux Mint because this one here you have to install through the live CD. Now to install Linux Mint, we're just going to double click the icon for install. Same process as before. Select the language, the key. 
keyboard, uncheck the updates, third party software, erase the disk, skip the region. This one here we'll call Mint Test. And again, use the uh, spacebar for password and log in automatically. It's done installing, so you can take out the install media and push enter to reboot, allowing it to complete its first boot. We're finally at the part that we've all been waiting for. We're going to put these laptops up against each other. So we'll be using the Nexus 7 to time the boot speeds. And we'll just uh, push both power buttons at the same time. Additional finger joints here to make sure it's all good. And we're off. Alright, Linux Mint is done at 16 seconds. Done at 25 seconds, almost 26 there. Now I'll just do a full reboot from the terminal using the same method, just to see if either of them shut down faster. So we'll just reset the Nexus here, and we'll push enter on the commands at the exact same time. Well, they seem to shut down at the exact same time. Linux Mint still came out the winner. 19 seconds for a full reboot. And Zubuntu coming in at 29 seconds for the full reboot. And we're just going to rule out any hardware issues that might exist, so we're going to swap the SSDs. Putting Linux Mint on the left. Zubuntu on the right. Bust out the trusty Nexus 7 again. Third time's the charm. Linux Mint again. 16 seconds, same boot time as the first one. And Ubuntu, right at 25 seconds, just like the first time. The Linux Mint was the clear winner there, which is what I'll be using for the, uh, the weekend project next weekend. So look forward to seeing that video and what I intended on using XFCE for. It's gonna be a, a fun project. I guess I'm probably going to hate it. I can't imagine it's going to be a very quick project, but I'll try and cut the video to be as short as possible. It was a hands-down win between Linux Mint and Zubuntu. I did everything I could to try and distinguish each of them from each other, other than doing all of the updates, but I feel like the ISO raw from the sources should be the best comparison, as there could be other open source drivers, even proprietary drivers that could be used that would modify the operating system to perform differently on the hardware itself. So for the testing that was done, Linux Mint is the clear winner at 16 second boot time. Now that we've found out that Linux Mint is the winner between Zubuntu and Linux Mint, we can see what I'll be using an XFCE user interface for. So, I'll see you next weekend. Good enough. Ah, this YouTube stuff is ridiculous.